Look, on this program, we try to make complicated issues as easy for you to understand as is possible. We are on the side of those in Struggle Street. And the last thing we need is a repeat of the pandemic mood. Yet the first major post-election polling research revealed today shows that more than 1,400 voters between May 23 and 27, just after the election, identified cost of living pressures as their top concern. So for the teals of this world, none of this matters, they can afford it. But for others, grocery prices, petrol prices, rent, insurance premiums, childcare costs, and now mortgage repayments matter. People are understandably anxious. The worst part of it is that the poor coots who pay have had nothing to do with creating the problem. As I said earlier in the program, would people have borrowed to the extent they did only months ago if this architect of getting everything wrong, the governor of the Reserve Bank, Lowe, hadn't told us only last November, it is still plausible that the first increase in the cash rate will not be before 2024. And this bloke's on a million bucks, 100% wrong. He should be dropped immediately from the team. We don't want to hear from him. You can only be wrong so many times before we say move on. Which brings us to another component of the government and bureaucrat made mess that we're in. Government has taken us to a trillion dollars of debt and more. The bureaucrats have taken us to the mortgage repayment crisis because the taxpayer was given the wrong advice. And now people are stressed again, pessimistic about the direction of the economy. The new Labor government has to arrest this pessimism and the anxiety, but they are front and centre in the energy mess. Now, we're supposed to be transitioning from fossil fuels to renewables. We're told it will happen with ridiculous and unachievable reductions by 2030. The Greens want a bigger say in Parliament, and I note the new government is going to give the Greens and the Teals a greater involvement in question time. This will mean, of course, fewer questions from and less scrutiny of the government by people like Peter Dutton. But it's the Greens and the Teals and the Labor Party and large sections of the Liberal Party and that fool little proud in the National Party who keep talking about net zero emissions, transitioning from fossil fuels. Yet we still receive over 60% of our energy from coal-fired power stations, and we're told, well, these power stations have been shut down for maintenance, it's an ageing fleet, and they're all going to have to be phased out, unquote. Well, hang on a minute. This energy shock is about the escalation in the price of energy, electricity, gas, and your power bill. Isn't this of government's making, government's plural? And yes, the previous federal government. You can talk all you like. The energy policy of politicians on both sides is about getting hairs on their chest. We will transition from fossil fuels to renewables and we'll give billions of dollars to the renewable industry to make it happen. So, if you're a board member of an outfit that owns a coal-fired power station, would you put your hand up to open another coal-fired power station or to update maintenance or to revamp your existing ageing coal-powered infrastructure? Why would a corporate owner with half a brain commit capital to the upkeep of a coal-fired power station when government is mouthing renewable energy production, which never materialises adequately, but government's prepared to subsidise this renewable stuff, reportedly to the tune of almost $3 billion a year up to 2030.